I hope you're having a wonderful day today. Today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my top 10 all-time favorite luxury purchases and my top 10 worst luxury purchases. I am going to break down the best into two categories. I am going to share five handbags and five pieces of jewelry. In the worst, it's just going to be a mix-up of what just was the worst. And before we get into all of that, if you're new to my channel, my name is Melinda. If you are returning, welcome back. I thank you for joining me and I would love it if you would just take one moment and hit that subscribe button down below. So before we get into all of the top 20 technically, I want to share with you the new diamond jewelry that I just got. As many of you know, this year I have been into Diamonds, 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 diamonds. That's about the only thing I have asked my husband for for every holiday. And many of you know that I have been wanting diamond earrings, and many of you did not know that I've been wanting a diamond necklace as well. So I'm super excited to be working with Idol on this video and I'm partnering up with them. They were gracious enough to send me this beautiful jewelry, and I love it. So I'm going to share the footage right now. I couldn't wait to unbox it with y'all. I had to open it up and try it on and I've been wearing it for several days now. So I'm going to insert that footage and um, show you how it all comes and then tell you a little bit more about the brand. So the packaging is beautiful. It comes in this lovely white box with this black ribbon. And let's get this open. I'm very excited about this. I can't wait to share this with y'all. I'm unboxing a little slow here. So when you open it up, it comes with these two pouches. And they're both really, really soft. These would make great little pouches for travel. And they, of course, they have idle on them. And this one has the jewelry in it. These are lab-grown diamonds. They are more sustainable. They are real diamonds. They are real thing, real diamonds in solid 14 karat gold. You can shower in these. You can work out in these. This is real jewelry. So let's see. Let's open it. Okay, so the top are the studs that I chose. I chose the largest size and the yellow gold. And the necklace, I chose the Solo 3 pendant. That right there is the Lucia. So the super cool thing about Idol is they're all about modular design. So you buy the studs and then you buy the necklace and then you can change them up so many different ways with add-ons. So here is the Luna pair that I got and I, what you do on the back, you'll see all these little holes. So it will fit anybody's earlobe. You're going to take the stud and you're going to put it through the hole that works the best for your earlobe. And then you're just gonna put the back on and you've completely changed the look of your earrings. I have wanted diamond studs and diamond hoops forever and now I have both just instantly. You can switch it up and change it out. Let me also show it to you with the Lucia piece. And this one is super cool. It looks really, really neat on the ear. I will be inserting pictures of these on me so you can see what it's like. Again, you've got all those little holes. You pick the one that works for your earlobe and then you put the back on it and there. Look how cool that is. It's so, so beautiful. And again, real diamonds, real 14 karat gold. There's a close up of the hoops. Look how beautiful those diamonds are. And another close up of the Lucia, just gorgeous. Gorgeous. And you can also do the same thing with the necklace. You can change the pendant. So this is the little cards that they sent. So you can just thread the necklace through there and see what some of the other add-ons will look like. And then they did the same with the earrings also. You can just put your stud right through there. So I'm going to include, um, I'm going to insert some um, close-ups of them on me. And I'm just, I am loving these so, so, so much. So much. Oh, they're just gorgeous. Okay, so let's get into the top. Should we start with the best or the worst? I say we start with the best. And let's do handbags first. And I totally forgot to tell y'all that they do send a card with the grading of the diamonds. And they are D to G color grade and the clarity is VS. 
and I will have a link down below with a discount code. Check them out. I definitely am going to be purchasing some more items from them. I am just blown away. So let's get into the bags. And what I forgot to tell you in the beginning of the video is I am going to rank all of these from five to one being the best bag purchase. Same with jewelry, except for with, well, actually I, I am ranking Yes, no, I am ranking the worst too. I do have that ranked as well. I wasn't going to originally because it's hard when something is the worst to rank it. So let's get into that coming in at number five is my Hermes Evelyn in the PM size. The color is gold. The leather is Clemence. This is such a fabulous, fabulous bag. Great color for year round, but especially for fall. It is so, so comfortable. You've seen me talk about this bag over and over and over and over, but it's super comfortable. I absolutely love it. And it seems to be making a bit of a comeback in the luxury community on YouTube. I have been seeing a lot of unboxings. A lot of people have this on their wish list. Unfortunately, currently leather goods just in general at Hermes are kind of hard to come by but um, this is not a quota bag. This is one you can just walk into the store and get should they have it and hopefully things will eventually get better. So this one is number five. Then coming in at number four is my Loewe small puzzle bag and this is in the sand and the mink. Now I did a video on this saying that it didn't bother me that the chains that hook on don't swivel. It does. It bothers me. <laughs> but it also bothers me on the next bag that I'm about to share with you too. But it's not a deal breaker. This bag is just fabulous. This is with the organizer in it. I will show it to you. It keeps it with some structure through here, which I like, but lets it slouch at the top. But it's just an organizer from Zimoni, which is not affiliate, by the way, and, um, and neither is the link for the jewelry down below. That's also not affiliate. But it's, I like that it slouches. I like the top handle. This does come in handy. I do wish it was larger and it would fit an iPhone, but it's not. But it's just a great, great bag. I reach for this one a lot. So the third one I think might surprise you a little with which one I chose. I have two of these and that is my Fendi Mini Peekaboo in the black Napa lambskin. Napa is lambskin but in the black Napa. <laughs> but I was looking at both of them in the closet and there is just something so elegant and beautiful about Fendi's lambskin. And I did a video comparing them last year and I'm pretty sure in that video I said I would pick the white one because it had feet and a thicker shoulder strap and this and that, but I don't know. I really think I would go for the black one again. It's just, or another color in lambskin because this is four years old and we're going to talk about lambskin in some of my worst purchases. This is four years old and in general, I feel like a lot of people that have really large collections and do reviews it depends on what bag like if you have a lot you're not like carrying it daily this has seen some serious action it has been on so many trips with me i recently um, for my birthday i think it was i got a fendi strap which i'm going to show you later um, which makes it even more comfortable and i think kind of modernizes it a little bit but I would have to have a peekaboo. Uh, I just absolutely love this one. So the final two uh, have everything I'm reaching here. I'm trying not to pause a billion times. <laughs> Is so number two would be my Louis Vuitton Trevi PM. So I had this bag. It was my first luxury bag ever, and it is a ten years old this month or la actually last month, I think it's 10 years old. I sold it to my girlfriend, Andrea. Her channel on here is Style for Life and she really never reached for it. She's very petite. It just didn't work for her and she was kind enough to sell it back to me. I just missed it and I was like, why on earth did I sell this bag? The quality of this bag versus some of their newer pieces is just amazing. And a decade ago, I wrote it down, it was $2,055, like 
a decade ago. There's a lot of money. It is so, so well made. It has the feet on the bottom. It has all the leather trim. My favorite print, Damier Aben. This pleating detail, which I'm pretty sure is why I sold it. I was probably like, this is so dated. I don't care anymore whatsoever. I think it's beautiful. I wore this a ton last fall and winter, and I will be wearing this a ton this fall and winter again. I don't reach for it that much in the summertime because it is a bigger bag and darker color. But there's that beautiful pop of red with the microfiber lining. It's just, they don't make them like this anymore. I'm just not excited by their new releases anymore. So what do you think number one is? I bet you're gonna get it right. What do you think it is? I know you're gonna get it right. It is my Hermes Kelly in the size 28 in the color Gris Pearl and Etope and the leather is Chev. It is my special order Hermes bag. I still can't believe that I got the opportunity to design my own bag and this is going to always be number one in my collection. I love this bag. I love the colors. I think it's just, for me, it's timeless, elegant, matches everything. It's just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful bag. And I did get the brushed gold hardware on this one, which I think is nice because you can only get that on a special order. I wanted it to say special order. I didn't want a solid color. There's nothing wrong with doing a solid color, but I wanted it to say special order. So I definitely went with the bi color and I could not be happier. This is number one. So now let's do the five pieces of jewelry. Okay, for the jewelry, I will of course be inserting close-ups because I know my camera just doesn't quite do it justice. Uh, my iPhone does a lot better, but it's really difficult for me to film on my iPhone, so I usually use my camera and then just do the close-ups on top. It's just a lot easier for me. So coming in at number five is my B01 bracelet in the tri-color. I wish they still made the tri-color. I would buy the necklace again in a heartbeat in the tri-color. And the ring too, I have the ring. No, I have the ring. <laughs> I, I have a lot of jewelry. But anyways, this one is just fabulous. It matches everything if I want to wear white gold, rose gold, yellow gold. I went for yellow gold in the idol pieces because normally I have on, my ears are really red, <laughs> but normally I have on my Cartier, um, studs, my love studs, and so I wanted to pair those together. I thought they'd look really cute, both being in yellow, but yeah, this goes with every single color, and I wish they had not discontinued the tri-color line. It's just, it's gorgeous. The second piece, so number four, is my Guilloche Alhambra necklace. I got this for my birthday last year from my husband. I was trying it on and he just absolutely surprised me and he said, this will be from me. So it's just gorgeous. It has a really, really long chain and there's so many things that you can do with this. I like it long in the winter time over chunky sweaters. You can of course double it up and make it one length or you can have the pendant a little lower and then kind of have like a choker with the chain. This chain is nice and substantial. It's thicker than the ones that come on the vintage um, pieces and I like it a lot better. When I first saw this in the case I thought I'll be honest I thought it was kind of obnoxious <laughs> and I was like no nah, I don't know if I want to try that on. Then I'm like I'm here, let's try it on. And then I left the store with it. So always try things on. <laughs> you never know until you put it on. And you know, kind of like with the 10 worst purchases, you don't always know until you get things home and use them either. So coming in at number three is one of my most used pieces, most thrilled with pieces ever. And that is my, just to get off of what I was gonna show it to you on. So you can't see it as well. That's really smart. <laughs> It is my Cartier Love 
cuff and that's very crooked but um, again I'm inserting pictures but I'm going to show you how to put it on. I have a video on this. A lot of people think that it pinches. It doesn't if you do it right. So you want to go from the outside of your wrist, the smallest point, you want to stick this like that, take the other hand and lift it so it's not scratching your skin and then it's on. You can see there is no redness and I turn red really easy so had I scratched myself at all it would be red right there. But I love this so much I have two of them. I have debated for years adding a third one but I don't think I need a third one. <laughs> I really don't. I stack these normally with my Just On Clue and I don't ever stack anything with the Bulgari one because of the writing on both sides so it would get very scratched up. These are scratched up. I get asked this a lot. If you're going to get solid shiny gold jewelry and you're going to wear it every day you're going to get scratches but looking at it just here like in this lighting I don't see any but if I was going to really get in there and get close I would see scratches. So coming in at number two, it is on my wrist and that is my newest luxury purchase, which is my Cartier Santos watch in the two-tone with the diamond bezel. And again, I will be inserting pictures, <laughs> but this is just stunning. It is very, very comfortable. I did not bring the extra strap out. It has a navy blue alligator strap and you can change it yourself. I have never changed it, not yet. I haven't had it that long, but um, let me put it on backwards so I can show it to you on my wrist. It's just, it's stunning. I love this, I love this. I am a huge, huge watch lover. I know a lot of women are not particularly into watches. I have been into watches uh, as long as I can remember and <laughs> I used to have a lot of watches that had batteries and I would always get them changed for free because I would just start talking about watches and they're like a woman likes watches <laughs> and so I wasn't trying to get them for free I just I like watches number one what do you think it's gonna be and I want to put in this disclaimer this is all branded so that's why you're not seeing the diamonds that I got from my husband this year because I'm just doing branded for the worst the best everything it's branded so what do you think number one is you know what it is <laughs> it is a 25th anniversary gift wedding anniversary gift and it is my two-tone Rolex with the mother of pearl face we looked at these for probably two years until we found the one that had the mother of pearl that just made us both just our jaws drop open. It just has pinks and greens and I don't know even with showing it on my other camera if it's going to show up correctly um, or you know show the true colors of it but it's just so, oh it's so beautiful. This is by far my favorite favorite branded luxury piece that I have and just there it is on my wrist just so so thrilled with this and I've never stopped being thrilled with this six years later almost six years later we're getting close <laughs> close to six years actually it has been six years because we got it a little bit before the anniversary so it is six years old love this love this love this so now let's get into the 10 worst <laughs> So these are a pretty big mix of items. Um, I don't have any jewelry. I tend to just love jewelry. <laughs> and um, a lot of these are not in my possession anymore because they were the worst, so I let them go. A few of them are still in my possession and I will share them with you and insert as many pictures of eye candy that I can. So we're gonna start with number 10, which is the least worst. This one I have a little, love-hate relationship with and that is my Chanel Deauville tote. I was so excited to get this. I didn't want the fabric one. I wanted leather. It was hard to find. I was able to purchase this with a discount code from Fashion File. I think it was like last December. This is heavy and it is empty. It is heavy. The weight is not what bothers me about this bag. I bought this for a specific reason. It's hard to fit this bag in the frame. It's so big. 
airplane travel. 100% that is what I bought this for. I watched so many videos and I was convinced it was going to fit underneath the seat. It does fit underneath the seat. You have to push these handles down. I just dropped what I wanted to show you. You have to push these handles down. It does fit under the seat. As many of you know, we fly the bus, we fly Southwest. It's because Nashville is a huge hub and they are nonstop for us almost everywhere. And I would rather go nonstop than go in first class. Uh, just, I wanna get there and be done with it. So it fits under the seat, but there is zero leg room. I cannot put my legs out. And I have taken this on four flights. And the only flight that I liked it on was the one where nobody sat in the middle and I got to stick it under the middle seat. I love what it fits. Um, I took this to Miami and I showed what fits in it and I was just thrilled with it. And then, I, you know, I think that we had nobody between us that leg of that trip and my knee was hurting and I needed to stretch and there was nowhere to stretch. It's rigid. It just it's not good for airplane travel and since then pardon me because i dropped this this is the one that i like and it's actually if i can hold them up at the same time because the stoville is quite heavy they are actually very close to being the same size and width and everything this one has that leather piece on the back that fits onto my carry-on bag and because it is nylon and squishy i've showed this in several vlogs I can put my feet on either side of it and squish it down. So I have not decided yet what I'm going to do with this one because it is bigger than I am and I don't carry that much and I have enough totes for car travel. So I have not decided if I'm going to keep this one or not. As many of you know, I'm not making any decisions this year about selling anything, but yeah, it's just not working for what I wanted it to work for. So that's number 10. Number nine, I don't think is going to be of any surprise. I have complained about this bag a lot on my channel from the moment that I got it. And that is my, Mich my Michelle, my Chanel, I'm trying to talk too fast. And uh, my Chanel medium, that's what I was trying to put medium and Chanel together. Um, blue lambskin flap. I this is number nine and not higher up in the list because I loved the color. I loved carrying it when I had it. I enjoyed it a lot. But the first day that I got it, and I don't think I have pictures of this anymore. It's in some other video somewhere. Um, but the first day that I got it, the zipper on the inside flap when you open it up made a huge indent on the second flap that you open up. There were scratches all over the front of it, the back of it. It just, I just showed you a four year old lambskin bag from Fendi. I am not afraid of lambskin. I love lambskin if it's done correctly. And a lot of you have told me the older Chanel lamb bags are fabulous. Some of you have told me their current ones are fabulous. I don't know if I just got a bummer, but I did not like that at all. So that is number nine. And then number eight is on the same theme and that is my Chanel mini in black lambskin. The lambskin, the same thing. It did not scratch nearly as bad as the blue one, but with very, very little use, if you just looked at it the right way, there was just tiny little scratches. There is nothing on that Fendi bag, nothing. But the main thing about the Chanel mini flap that bothered me was that it's mini. <laughs> I just don't like mini bags. I brought out a little eye candy. I did a video comparing this one to the Chanel and I actually just prefer this one and I think I got this one for around 800 or something and the Chanel was in the 3000 range and I just used this one recently in Boston um, to a baseball game and I just it's a great bag I only need one little tiny bag and this one is that grained leather it's not um, you know it's very very durable I just didn't like that bag I was just I will just admit it I bought that bag because of the hype and 
everybody was so into them and you were supposed to just love them and I certainly do not. So I do not go by hype anymore. I promise I'm not hating on Chanel in <laughs> this next one. <laughs> Number seven is also Chanel. I'm not hating on Chanel. For most of the time that I have been purchasing luxury, I have bought more Chanel than anything else. I started this channel with four or five Chanel bags already in my collection, so that's why so many of these are Chanel. But there's ones that are worse, so I have other brands coming up that are worse. But <laughs> So anyways, um, so number seven is a bag that was so, so popular. I was the first one to unbox it, I believe, and then so many other people got it, but in the small size, and that is my Chanel bucket bag. The bag was absolutely beautiful. It was stunning. I liked the size of it, the larger size. I'm not sure um, if I would have liked the mini size. I didn't get to see it, so I don't know. It was in a beautiful blue caviar leather, but, and I said this very openly, even in the unboxing video that like the bottom of the bag had feet, but if you touched it, it would just, I mean, it had no structure whatsoever. The rolled edges, it was called like the rolled bucket bag. And every time I showed that bag, somebody's like, it's crooked. I'm like, it's not crooked. It's just, I don't know. I just felt like it was not on par with Chanel's quality. And the strap was really long crossbody in super thin, like thin, 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 thin. And I had, I'm gonna show you another little bit of eye candy. I already owned this Fendi Montresor. This is the strap I was telling you about earlier. This is the bag I'm using this week that I got from my peekaboo. Um, but this one comes with a thick strap too, and I often switch that over to the peekaboo. But this one, I just, I liked it better, so much better. I know people thought I was nuts because like the little CCs looked like jewelry. It was a gorgeous bag. Just like this one has no feet and I mean, it is structured. The bottom of this has something in it and it's just been an amazing bag. And I don't need a whole bunch of bucket bags and it was a lot of money and Yes, I love this new strap, it's super comfortable. So number six is costume jewelry. And I don't have a lot of costume jewelry. If you've been following me, you know that. I'm gonna insert some video here. I only have, I think, four pieces. I don't have any plans on selling these. I'll show you one of them here. I don't know how long that footage is, but I have the, the CC earrings from Chanel. None of the crystals have ever fallen off which could be because I've probably worn them twice. <laughs> I have not worn these pieces very much and they were just frankly a waste of money. I really do like Chanel's packaging for their costume jewelry and I think it's beautiful. I think all of those pieces are beautiful which is why I'm not letting them go but I mean it's a waste of money. It's a huge waste of money. And so then that brings us to number five, which was my World Tour Speedy 30. And I don't know that I have a single picture of this bag left. I will try to find a picture and put it up, but we all know what a Speedy 30 looks like. The only thing I did on this bag was put my initials and I had the option of not putting my initials and I decided, well, you know, it's customizable, it's gonna be great. I really didn't try a Speedy 30 bandolier on. I had 325s at the time, and I thought, how how much difference could five centimeters be? Huge, 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 huge difference for me. I did not like that on me crossbody. The strap, um, was very, very uncomfortable. It was black leather, but it wasn't the nice soft leather like on my Odeon PM. It was more like a Damier Aben leather, and it was very stiff, and the bag was heavy, and I was like, this is going to be a nightmare to sell because it has my initials on it. <laughs> and when I did my original video, somebody reached out to me and said, we have the same initials. If you ever want to let it go, please um, get back to me. And I did get back to her and she had already ordered one with her initials. Well, fast forward 
and I'm looking at my bag and my initials had turned pink. They were black and white. So the bag was deemed defective. I was extremely happy. Louis Vuitton gave me credit for what the current price of the bag was going for and I purchased something else. I think I got my Montaigne BB with that. Um, with that. I had to pay difference, but I did not like that bag at all, and I wanted to. <laughs> Number four is another Louis Vuitton item, the Louis Vuitton Caissa. I think I'm, or, yeah, I think it's Caissa. It's been a very long time since I've had this bag. It was beautiful. I love Damier Aben. It's my favorite print. I love Rose Ballerine, and I think that they look really good together. It reminds me of chocolate and strawberry ice cream. I don't know why, but it does but it was an awkward hobo bag that didn't really close. It just kind of stayed open. And the shoulder strap was really thick and it was so uncomfortable, especially if you loaded that bag up. It just did not work for me at all. And I was like, <sighs> it was really, really pretty, <laughs> but I cannot stand if something is not going to be comfortable. And yes, that had to go. Number three is the Gucci Soho Disco shoulder bag. It was a hobo bag. I had it in, I believe it's the same color that I have my, um, my disco bag in. This one is not the disco. It's just the Soho, not disco. <laughs> just this Gucci Soho shoulder bag. It was a gorgeous bag. The leather was super supple and soft. It was very comfortable to wear. Um, it molded to your body. The problem with this bag is the chains were one solid chain. And I will insert some pictures so hopefully you'll know what I'm talking about, which that was a good thing in one aspect. When you wore the bag, it was closed. Even though there was no real closure, it was closed and it felt very secure. However, if you went to pay for something and you took one strap off, it was still closed. You had to take the whole bag off and open it because those two straps with the weight of what was in the bag made it to where you could not open it. And it was just, it was a pain. It was just a pain to get in and out of. So I let that go. And the next two items are still in my collection. And number two is my Louis Vuitton denim shawl. I thought when I bought this that I would just wear it and wear it and wear it and wear it. I've worn it a small handful of times. I don't think I reached for it once last winter. I thought the blue color was going to be great with my skin tone. And I don't know. I just I'm not real crazy about the color. I don't like how easily it snags. I um, am not going to open this all the way up. I did this in a least used video recently. And there is a little small snag that my um, sales associate is very talented. She took a needle and got almost all of it out, but no, I don't like it. <laughs> I really don't like it. I have a, a different one from them that's called the Leogram, and I will try to put a picture of it in because I don't have it in here. But it's like a different material. It's shiny, and it's a lot more subtle. This is just, I like monograms, but... I don't know. And I wear a lot of prints and um, I don't know, just to me, it doesn't go with anything. I have a friend that wears one all the time. Almost every time I see her, she's wearing this and it looks amazing on her, but she's also usually wearing solid black head to toe and then has this on. I usually have a print on. So my number one item, I am going to pause for a second because otherwise I'm going to be really, really, really reaching. <laughs> Okay, so the worst purchase I have ever made ever, and it smells so bad. It is sitting on my desk. I hate these. <laughs> I hate these, hate these, hate these. It is my Burberry rain boots in the Czech, the classic Czech print. They are so cute. They smell. This whole room smells. <laughs> I, walk up, I was prepping for the video and put everything in here yesterday, and I walked in, and I'm like, they smell like rubber, it's awful. But that's not even the problem with them is that they smell like rubber. The problem is this right here, this rubber bit at the top is so stiff. Every time I walk, it hits me mid calf and they are so uncomfortable. They are very difficult to get in and out of even with the zipper because this rubber is so stiff at the bottom. Um, this is how little they've been used. Look how clean that is, <laughs> look at that. I have thought about selling these 
forever, but they're so incredibly heavy and I just can't, it would probably just not even be worth my time to mess with shipping them. But yes, I, I wish I had never bought these. I love Burberry. Almost everything that I own from Burberry, everything that I own from Burberry besides this, I love and would repurchase. I love their um, scarves. I love them. These are awful, and I'm going to show you the shoes that are probably more than 10 years old that I wear when it rains instead. These cheap little Michael Kors boots, they're really short, and they have this is how old they are. Look at the design on the side. When Michael Kors used to have that little hanging circle thing from his um, bags and what all. But this part here is stretchy and then they've got this back tab which makes it so easy and they're short. I'll show it to you next to this one how short they are. I wear these all the time. Yeah, they're the bottoms of these got some. I'm gonna have to go wash my hands and I'm gonna have to Clorox wipe my desk. <laughs> I purposefully didn't set shoes on the desk and than I did. I was, I was planning on putting paper towels down. But anyways, that is my worst purchase ever, ever. It was just uncomfortable and it smells bad. <laughs> I hope you have an amazing day today. I hope to talk to you again very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.